Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to game number two. We're gonna get straight into it. Whoops, my bad. I full screened it for a bit here. All right, let's see the bands. Uh, okay, so as usual, first pick gets to say whatever they want in the banning phase. Technically, they can. They they will go for some more respect here. They go for the Fredrin, which is a great ban here, uh, knowing that Echo just excel. They find so much success with the Fredrin pick. But as I said in game number one, second pick is at a massive disadvantage technically because they have to constantly ban one one and joy these two heroes just can't be let go wow so it's glue first pick i would expect the Faramis to come out but it's it's really smart by echo technically right i can see why they didn't go for the Faramis. the Faramis would have been the easy answer to the glue but they know the valentina is still up for grabs right they didn't ban it nor did Bren, so they pick up the Valentina instead. So if Echo or well, you know what? It's it's oh, actually now that I think about it, it's actually really good. They they pick up the Kaja, if they pick up the Faramis here, that's exactly what Bren wants, right? It's two big ultimates uh, to play with. That's why you see the Valentina get picked up here because not only is the Valentina denying the pick from well, the reason they have they go for the Valentina is because if they go for the Faramis. Yeah, uh, like I said, Valentina can steal both the Divine Judgment and the Faramis. Two massive ultimates. Echo do not want that to happen, so they pick up the Valentina again. Very, very easy. Very, very smart. Wow. Whoa. Okay, so this is something that I've realized in MPLPH. I don't know if this is just like for Bren and Echo, but so many magical dealers, magical damage dealers uh, in the gold lane. I think the only one we've... Well, we've seen Natan and Harith in MPL ID, but the Lunox we haven't seen actually at all uh, so far in MPL ID. Again, I don't know if this is just Echo uh, who plays the Lunox, or maybe you guys can tell me in the comment section here. Hey! Coach Ren! Coach Ren and Bren! <laughs> Yeah. They still take out the Faramis though. I'm noticing that. I think it's a good ban. The Benedetta respecting Sanford. Maybe a Lapu too if they really want to go for it. Or they can just go for the jungle ban. Mm, Akai maybe becomes a solid option to go for if you want to ban. Barats. If you want. Yeah, okay. Barats the option. And Echo just focuses down on the, the jungle. Oh. I like it. I really like it. Wow, brilliant draft. Brilliant. Now, yeah, it's really good. Wow, 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 wow. I shouldn't have skipped forward. Uh, I could have like spoken about it uh, here, but we can we can talk about it as, as it goes, right? Then knowing that Kaltizi is a very good assassin player, they banned out the Fanny early on, and then they banned out the Hayabusa. Now the other, the only other assassin that is meta is the Ling, right? So they pick it up, they take it away, they deny the pick away from Bren Esports, and uh, they force, again, Bren to pick up something like the Paquito. And yeah, I've been saying this too, a lot of MPL ID, it just hasn't come through. So it's I am not crazy. I've said in many of the drafts in uh, MPL ID that maybe the Paquito, um, why don't people pick up the Paquito more often in the jungle? It can still work, it just got buffed recently with more damage on the second skill and more shielding for the first skill, right? And now, honestly, this is this is a this is a pretty good uh, Lapu angle, Sanford. You know the Sanford play that I casted at M4 Grand Finals. If it's not Lapu, maybe they can go Yuzong. Yeah, they go Yuzong. It's either Lapu or Yuzong at this point. Like, there's no other XP lane. Benetta was banned out. I'm trying to think of other XP laners that could work here, but those are the only ones I can think of uh, for this comp, right? It, Natan, Bren are relying a lot on the Natan in the late game. So having a Yuzong is just really good. Or a Lapu. I think Yuzong is a bit more reliable. Uh, chasing someone like a Natan who's kind of mobile, right? Because Lapu, once you use that Bravest Fighter, it's done. You need to use your Flicker. Meanwhile, Yuzong, pop the Black Dragon for him if... Um, uh, the Natan goes back to his ultimate. You can always follow him with your Black Dragon form. Yeah. 
Now, I'm not a big fan of the Selena pick, though. Really not a big fan. Now, I again, this is how I look at the game. Mid-control is almost everything. You control the game with mid-control. And I understand why Bren didn't go, I mean, went for the double roam. They understand that Echo have the mid-control down. Kaja Valentina, very hard to beat that when it comes to wave clear. Uh, maybe a Lilia could work here, but again, up against this composition, it's going to be very tough to actually pull off the Lilia. Uh, so I understand why they didn't go for the Lilia and fight the mid-control uh, in terms of wave clear. So they instead fought it in a different way with kill pressure, right? Few on the Selena. So I understand that. Still, though, I am pretty biased towards teams who are able to get the mid-control. Uh, and yeah, Yaoi just does it a bit better with Sanji uh, here. Valentina and Kaja, once again, they're able to clear the wave super fast. And few, honestly, no, you're not really, a, you know, you're not a wave clear man. So she's just going to have to rotate across the map, acting as a double roam. And it's pretty easy to read if you're Yaoi, right? Um, because he has to, from time to time, he still has to go to the mid lane. It's still going to be like Yaoi following her whenever, wherever. And if you follow the Selena, the kill pressure is then nullified, right? The only reason Selenas are able to find Abyssal Arrows is because they're not visible. It's unpredictable. You don't know where she is. You don't know where the Abyssal Arrow is going to come from. And uh, with her visible constantly on the map with Yaoi following, it's going to be really tough. Oh! Good, good, good gank there. Benny definitely got a bit too aggressive there. And like I said, when you're out of the vision, out of vision, you get picked off. Well played. Really well played. Really well played by Bren. Always been a nightmare for a lot of the top teams and Echo is not safe even with that bait. Question is, they're now supplying So yeah, they're playing strong side down goal and Echo are playing strong side in the XP. Um wow. Really interesting choice by Cal Tizi to actually jump on Yaoi there. Yaoi was level 3. Oh, no, he did. He just got level 4 in there. Yeah, I think this was just a mistake by, by Kyle. Yeah. I would just say that was a mistake by Kyle. He got a bit too aggressive. He got two kills bottom, and maybe he got overconfident in that particular moment. I don't know how that happened, but it's Sanford, so I don't doubt it. Nice read by Yaoi there. Oh. Wow. Kaltizi still gets it. Wow. I thought he missed it there. Good calculation. Wow. <laughs> Wow. And is it a problem, right? Um, the Herith does super well against the Natan once um, the Herith gets to that power spike, which is level 4. And even in all-ins here, uh, Natan is going to be losing because it's just the added shielding whenever you dash on um, the Herith, right? So Yaoi just needs to show up and Super Marco needs to just back off. It's really good, despite um, Benny. Again, Benny is such a good weak side player. It's so crazy. He lost already. He died once. He got ganked. Super Marco has a pro uh, probably has a lead on him, right? In terms of levels, he does as well, but he's still able to make it work. Oh, it's such a scary team. When even your weak side can do this, win, your la win his lane without the same amount of gold, same amount of XP, Benny's in four, man. <laughs> he really is. My God. Best gold laner in the world. Good open by Yaoi. A lot of resources committed. That's the way to go. Boom. Easy pick off, man. Again, it's so annoying, right? Yaoi opens up here. The damage isn't enough. And yeah, I... This was just... 
This is interesting. This is very well played, right? The, Sanji and Benny, they stayed out of vision for so long, so they, making Ogwen, and even here, you can see the, the little micro decisions that they're making, right? The, the way they're hiding in the vision, like with the vision, with the bushes here, just playing around it so that Bren actually goes for it, and it ultimately becomes just a bait. Carl Teasy clears out the mid lane, and back again. It's mid control. With more mid control, Carl Teasy is able to get solid jungle, like um, on the Ling, which is very hard to do. In this meta, I've been playing Ling. Well, I played Ling. I got I got chocolate because I just can't farm. My team just lost, and um, yeah, I, my my jungle was invaded. Oh, he still gets away from that. Good reset. A like, really good reset. Again, it's the Black Dragon from some Sanford, right? Is that winning lane? The, the, they've been putting so much pressure on Sanford, Echo. They've been putting so many of the resources up top that Sanford has a lead against the glue now. And he's able to constantly either clear out the waves or just be there on time, uh, reacting to the glue's movements. And with this, this is good, you know, because Ling, here, he's at a disadvantage. If they actually go for the fight, if Bren are full HP, they can go for the, Lord, the turtle pretty easily. But again, uh, because Carl Tizi doesn't have purple buff, Carl Tizi is still on the purple buff here. It's just really good by Sanford with the black dragon form. Right, Carl Tizi was still waiting there too. He jumps even on it, and then he backs off, and then he goes because he sees the, the cut, or, or the reset. And even then, the turtle is still... Again, it's, it's just so smart. Even though it's unnecessary here, there's no jungler. In case the jungler or Carl Tizi has rotated fast enough, Sanford just buys a little bit more time, um, not letting Ogwen set up for the turtle. He baits the turtle here and he resets it over there. Now, Echo have a say, at least, right? They don't have a better position. It's still Brent with a better position. Good dodge by Sanford there. Good retry. Beautiful retry. Oh, beautiful play, Bren. Yeah, like I said, Bren have the better um, position here in the turtle take, right? They they have it cleared out. Even mid lane has been shoved in, so they have just more pressure around this place. And it's just really well played by Kaltz. You got to give it to Kaltz. It wasn't just set up. It was also the execution here. Good retry. Good knockout strike. Makes up for his mistake earlier. Well played too, right here. Mm. Uh oh. Good play by Kyle. Nice dodge in the Furious Dive. Ah, I can't dodge from that. Oh my god. I can't believe it. Wow. Somehow, again, when you think you have won the team fight, they just do that. Mechanically gifted, this team. My god. What a team. What a team. I can't believe it. That looked so good for Bren. And Echo are still able to like... Wow. Get themselves out of that. Well played. This is uh, something that I've seen from uh, a lot of Lings. They don't finish up their boots. They go instantly for Berserker's uh, Fury. They don't go for Wind Talker, by the way. So if you guys want to play the Ling, I think this is the best way to go because it gets you to that power spike a bit faster. Boots, not really necessary as you are usually using your first skill to traverse across the map. Good movement. Again, they're just not, they're not committing into anything that they don't need to. Right? Bren gets a lead back, it's fine because they are able to push out that top side right before the turtle spawns, forcing someone to rotate up top. Super Marco goes up top and they go towards the bottom side. And again, with proper setup. Wow! So good! How the fuck did they isolate these dudes, man? Okay, they cleared out top. Super Marco there. Echo knows this is the pocket as, you know, this is the way they need to fight. And they choose to rotate all together. Bottom. This is so smart. Yaoi even cuts them off here. Wow, Yaoi. Look at him. Oh my god, what a brilliant play. Kyle is forced back and he literally created the space. He isolated Flap. That's that's the question I was asking, right? How how did they isolate Ogwen and Flap? What happened here? Yaoi just being there. And this is something that is oh my god, that again, this is something that the best only the best roamer does. 
The way he's able to put pressure without ulting. Just the fact that you haven't used your ultimate is massive, right? Because imagine this. I think a... I think um, a roamer who isn't on the level as Yaoi would have just ulted Ogwen to the team. Easy, right? They would have just gone for that. I think the default play would just to be that, uh, just to go for the pick you see right for your eyes. Either Flap or Ogwen. But what does Yaoi do? He doesn't care about these two members. He knows that even if he just walks up, he has the flicker. Kyle needs to constantly be like putting this much space between uh, Yaoi and himself. So... Yaoi just isolates these two members and they're able to collapse so well. These guys are out of the picture. Big brain. Big brain, dude. What are you supposed to do? He's got outplayed. Oh my god. Wow. See, this is why it's really good to watch the replay here. Oh my god. That's why I always watch replays too in MPLID matches, just to see exactly what the, the little things that these pros do that, that differentiate them, uh, that makes them special, that makes them pro players, right? Because that's what top tier players and top tier teams do. Oh my, it's so fucking good. Oh my god. It's so damn good, chat. Or boys. Oh my god. Then they clear out the bottom side. I love it. They know that the bottom, uh, the, the mini wave here is going to be able to clear out the, tur uh, the turret. So they, they don't even send these members unnecessary down below. It, even like basically leaving the minions to kill the turret there kind of denies minions from as much minions as possible from Bren, right? Because the turret does clear a few minions there. And that's a little bit of gold XP lost by Bren Esports. And it's still a slow push building. So it's just really smart. Really, really smart. So they've already set up bottom side without touching it. Oh my god. Or they did touch it. When did they do it? Ah, my lord. Carl, right after taking the gold buff, sets it up. It's so good because usually if you get this big of a play, two members down, you would, again, any, any, any jungler normally would just clear the entire wave, get the turret, and then move on to Lord. Echo. Carl. Slow pushes it. Knowing that they will be setting up for the Lord push here. They even time it really well. The reason he goes for a slow push instead of full clearing. And even here, it's a call for sure. Sanford was rotating towards that wave, wanting to get the turret. It's a call here. You're saying, no, Sanford, don't do it. Don't do it. It sets up perfectly with the timing here. The Lord's going to be spawning in just a few seconds. 840, right? So this is going to be slow pushing. We don't need to control that anymore, Sanford. Step away. We'll just control top and mid. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's so good, it's so good, it's so, it's so good. oh my god. Again, they utilize one wave first, they clear out the mid lane, forcing Bren Esports to kind of rotate here, right? So now they're forced to play around the bottom and even the mid lane. Now with this, Kalti is down below and they're able to utilize the Lord almost fully here, right? They're not pushing just yet, but they are able to utilize the Lord fully. Yeah, because the mid lane now, everyone is dispersed. Sure, the Lord was taken down, but the mid lane is going to be sieged down very slowly. Sanford is also putting pressure down and they are able to just force a pick. They even die under the turret for this wait wow i did not expect that i thought that we were just gonna bro how do you set up that perfectly and where do you get your confidence to dive in on the five people under the turret i thought they were just gonna they were just gonna siege i mean whatever you want to call it I will just say it's just confident. To break the rules, or, or I don't know, oh, wait, what's, what's the quote? You need to understand the rules really well to break them, right? And that's what Echo do. Echo are so good at that. Echo are so good at that. Because the default play would have just gone, go for the siege, go for the siege. This dive is unnecessary, but they understand. Hey, we got the mechanics to pull it off. Why are we scared? Why do we need to play fully disciplined when we can make these plays happen? When we can pull this off? When we have Sanford? <laughs> Jeez. Well played. Just wow. 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 And then they get the turret. So they, they get what they initially wanted to. And then they reset. And then they push bot. Wow. That's so smart by Sanji. Stealing away. 
Nobody would go for a Selena. Like, we would steal Selena ult. Takes it just so that he can actually use the Abyssal Arrow. If this connects, wow. Good CG and wow, man. Wow. If Echo plays at this level, they, they may they, they might build a dynasty. I think they... Oh my god, they're going to win MSC at this point. Just if they keep on playing this way, man. No holes, literally. When you expect a hole. Like the hole, their weakness is like, oh, maybe they go in too much. No, no. It's perfectly set up. And they know. They have the players to do it, to pull that off. So no, it's not a mistake. Oh my god, oh my god. It's... it's Look at Yaoi. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that was just really well played. Um, so he, he definitely has his map all the way over here. He knows the positioning and he keeps it there while he's um while he's analoging over here because he knows exactly where Super Marco is, you know? Um Wow, wow. Just I, I really want to see a player cam. Like the player cam. The pro the, 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 the yeah, like them. I wanna see their screen. I wonder what he's doing to like make make that wow. Yaoi. We were just talking about objectives. Oh no, I'm gonna flicker in and use my ultimate right away. Yaoi's on the prize. Yaoi was like, what do you mean worry about the Nathan? He has to worry about me. <laughs> yeah, he completely said what? Exactly. There's a Nathan? Are you sure? And they just keep going in with Oh, there the is! <laughs> but he's the flicker. Oh, there is! <laughs> See, this is Echo confidence. Echo highlights not stopping onto the express. They have a Lord, they're going in for the push. The House of Highlights. Oh, what happened here? Cameraman! Okay. Yowie kept doing things like that. He flickered inside a bush. He had no vision. No idea. Yeah, this time around, it's Ren who's trying to do that. They try to go for him. Not a good fight. And they're able to take him out. But look at this. The dragon is still active. He's still flying. He's looking for his targets. And that's going to be Sanford quite low. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sanford. Oh, my God, dude. He's 16. That's two tanks in front for Brent. Kyle Easy on the back foot. He takes care of the dragon. But Flab will be taken out as well. One in him down. Super Marco. He's going up on the front. He's doing the damage. Oh no. At this point, I'm just reacting, right? I mean, at this point, Brent, they're just throwing they're throwing their hands in the air they're just trying to look for like a a haymaker and it'll end the fight it'll end the game maybe turn the tides because they're just too dominant man they're just way too good oh when gets low it's done it's done it's gg wow oh oh okay it's not over it's not, i thought it was done wow all right good defense but it's echo again overstaying oh my lord it's so sad it's so so frustrating, right? When even when you win, it's them making a mistake and not you like popping off. Oh my god! How are you? There better be a team. Everybody's looking at them, right? There better be a team who can who can beat Echo. Because I want to see the level of competition. Right? <sighs> Beautiful dodge. Yes, OSX. I agree. <laughs> And then it's just back to setup again. They slow push. Oh my god, that's so brilliant. My lord, look at how they ignore both side lanes. It's just, it's frozen, and then it's slow pushing, and then they just control mid wave, and it's a free lord. They're just better. They, oh, 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 what happened there? Wow, beautiful earth shatter. Wow. Never count Filipino teams out. What the heck? Holy shit. How the heck did Bren... Wow. Ogwen. Four-man Earth Shatter. How did he get it done? Earth Shatter Flicker. Oh my god. Beautiful. Beautiful. If Super Marco was just there a bit faster, I think Super Marco should have flickered here. But again, it's a very risky move. Oh, that would have been a wipe. That would have been a wipe. Oh, that could have been so bad for Echo. 
Brenner really close, honestly. To like, oh my god. How good are these two teams? Just when you count them out, it looked dominant, but there are no dominant games here. What? What is that interaction? The targeting of this dude. He... Oh my goodness, Yaoi. Okay, guys. Usually any Kaja would just pop the ult, not target. This guy targeted Marco. Ult in time. Super fast hands. Super fast... Oh. Even when they pop off, when they're able to come back a bit, Echo just styles on them again. Oh my god. Wait, okay, I mean, I shouldn't be impressed by Yabi's play there. He was He's able to do that on a Cho, right as he G Kundo flickers on CW at M4, in the midst of everybody, when there are some other people low. So but if you can target like that on the Cho, yeah, the, the Kaja is a walk in the park. Look at their spacing. Look at the targeting. Brilliant. Carl gets zoned away. He wins the trade against Carl. Oh, Benny. Oh, Benny. Oh, my God. I'm not even going to try to fucking dissect this. It's just they're better. Holy shit. Wow, even here it's so intense. Wow. You can't. Yeah, you don't. GG, GG, man. Oh my god, GG. Well played. Wow. Just wow. That's it, guys. That's it for the video. I, th I hope you enjoyed it. If I missed anything, please do let me know in the comment section. Tell me what you think of the game. Tell me what you think of the series. And I think after this, it is... Yeah, these are the best. These are the two best teams right now. Obviously, things can change. Obviously, the other uh, teams can catch up. But for now... I think these are the two best teams. Well played. GG. Can't wait to see the development of these two teams. And I think if they keep on playing like this, these are the two teams that will represent Philippine, uh, Philippines at MSC. GG. Wow. I'm still speechless.